Hello, vlog people. This is my first vlog of the year that's talking instead of just putting music stuff on. And I just thought I should try to catch up with you a little bit. Um, my whole family was here for, for the holidays for like two and a half weeks. We had my parents, my brother, and my niece, and, and Danny's mom, and Danny's sister, and then local people who were here all the time uh, around the holidays. So it was a house full, and it was great for Cooper. It was very thrilling. Cooper is uh, learning like... I don't know, 10 or 15 words a day, repeating everything, referring to things that he learned like two weeks ago, putting together three-word sentences. You know, he's not even two yet. I just want to say he's very advanced. And um, he is quite extraordinary and a fun, happy kid, and we laugh and sing a lot. Um, we did have a very sad thing happen. Um, you know, we have our two dogs, Zach and Emma, who we've had for 15 years. And very sadly, last Friday... Emma uh, died. She uh, uh, started just failing out of the blue, and um, we I rushed her to the to the vet hospital, and apparently she had a tumor on her spleen that ruptured that we didn't know about, and so she just started failing. And with uh, uh, surgery was an option of uh, looking to see if the tumor was directly attached, and if it was, and it was clean, and there was the whole issue of she's 15 years old. You know, what would the recovery be? Would she make it through the surgery? All those things. Because she has slowed down considerably. And we decided to go for it. Zach had his spleen removed five years ago, and he's been great. The doctor explained that 15 is a lot different from 10. But um, anyway, we decided to do the surgery, and then on her way into the surgery, everything just slowed down, her breathing and her heart rate, and it was very, very sad. And it was Danny and me and Cooper, and uh, trying to put on... a a face for Cooper so he didn't see how horrible it was. Um, but, you know, I mean, for those of you who have animals or lost animals, they're your family. You know, 15 years. That's like, you know, a third of my life. And uh, it's and all of my relationship with Danny. And she's just missing. She's just missing. The house feels empty. The tap, tap, tapping with her little toenails on the hardwood floors upstairs. And I'm like, God damn it, stop it, you know. That was my only thing, <laughs> is that when Cooper came, the dogs became the older brothers and sisters, so they were supposed to know better. So I'd be like this very patient, you know, very patient, and I'm always patient with, with Cooper, and, and then I'd turn to the dogs and be like, shut the fuck up! Anyway, um, so the Sybil aspect of my parenthood, my parent um, will, will be changing. Oh boy, it's it's early here. I'm getting ready to go out. I'm shooting this thing this morning uh, for an upcoming TV show that I'm very excited about that I'll tell you more later about later. Um, what else is going on? For my new year, I have dedicated myself to yoga. It has been calling me for years. The universe has been calling me. And since I had my injuries, so many injuries, and then the injuries this summer, and then my knee surgery, my menis tearing my meniscus, and then my knee surgery... And I have a sciatica thing that happened this summer also when I was doing First Wives Club. So it's been really brutal. And I have decided to start yoga. So I have. I've been doing it three times a week. And it's to, to get my core strength, my, my strength, my inner strength, my outer strength, my core strength, my focus, my balance. Balance. The very first class I took, the instructor was talking about balance. I was like, oh, that's what I need. I need balance. Um, I didn't really do it quite that overtly, but that's what I was feeling. So I've started it, and it's really, really hard work. It's really, really hard. Um, you know, I'm somebody who likes results immediately. I like to do the work. I like to give it out, everything. I like to pound it out and get my results, and that's not the way it works. Um, it's slow, and it's, it's, e it's, it's slow and, and easy, being easy on yourself and pushing your limitations. But I think it will have great results. It already has. The fact that I'm taking these classes, uh, these yoga instruction already, just the, the quiet of it. It reminds me a lot of my 12-step program, too. Just in the, you have to shut up and listen and be attentive and involved and it's a meditational thing. It's very cool. Um, what else, what else, what else? I'm preparing to go to New York. I'm going to New York this weekend. I'm doing Birdland on Monday, which I'm very excited about. I'm going to be doing lots of great stuff. I'm doing some Jolson and stuff, which I'm excited about. And some, you know, regular pop stuff, Broadway stuff, some new things that Todd and I haven't done or haven't done much. But I'm actually going to New York uh, primarily to work on Jolie, the Jolson piece, with the writers and the director. 
um, to hone it and get it ready because we are really, really intent on, on moving this forward. I'm kind of itchy, do you notice that? It's dry here, although it's been raining around the clock torrentially. Now, you know what somebody pointed out to me the other day is that when I first moved to Los Angeles, it rained every year in January and February. Like, we called it monsoon season. It rained all the time. That was our rain for the year. That was our rain. It watered everything. It gave us water to drink. It was... And, and you know, then there was a seven-year drought, and then it sort of sprinkled once in a while. And now when it rains more than two or three days, I got calls from all over the country asking us if we were okay. I'm like, it's raining! It's raining. It's raining. It is national news. It's just weird that it's raining and the whole city shuts down. And people, there are so many accidents. You drive in the freeway, there's accidents everywhere. There's people that are driving the rain. Anyway, so my New Year's resolutions. I want television again. I want to be doing a TV show. Now, I've got a couple of things in development, but I want to be doing TV again. Um, but I've got a lot of concert dates coming up that I'm very excited about. So maybe balancing that somehow. Um, I think my New Year's resolution is to learn from my child as much as I can. You know, I think one of the main things that he's taught me lately is when we're going on a walk or we're going in the park or we're going somewhere and we have, you know, we have the destination. We've got to get to so-and-so's house or we've got to go to the park. We've got to do... Uh, and, you know, Cooper can stop and look at something, a bug, a rock, a branch, a bird, a squirrel, stop to look at an airplane and delight in all of it, in the mystery of everything, in the... Uh, the joy of the detail. And it teaches me that, you know, the, the journey is the destination. When I'm focused on the destination, then I can't uh, take in the experience of the journey. And the truth is, the destination is never the destination. The destination you think is never the destination. I'm not talking about I'm going to Target now. Yeah, I can make that a destination. I'm talking about my goals for my life, for my spirit, for my career for my family. You choose this, and if I'm so focused on just that thing, I don't get to see all this, which made me lead me to something infinitely greater. Um, you know, they say God's imagination is much greater than mine. So the journey is the destination, and I learned that from Cooper. And the other thing I've learned is that the longer I have Cooper, the more gray I'm getting in my beard. And see, I don't know if you can see it on here, but I'm getting... The gray's happening, kids. Yeah, I'm kind of itchy. All right, all right, I've got to get in the shower, and I've got to go to shoot this thing, and then I have a rehearsal, and have a great day. Bye. Do something wonderful for somebody. That's the journey. That's the destination. See ya.